welcome to my channel and for you guys who are new here my name is Addie and today's video is going to be like a daily plant routine and I'm going to take you along with me um, and show you guys everything that I do for my plants in the morning um, typically I don't do this every morning if I don't have time but today is my day off and I thought it would be perfect to bring you guys along with me my camera is falling, so hold that thought. Okay, so I'm just gonna take you along with me into each room that has plants. I'm gonna check to see if they need water, if they need misted, if their leaves need cleaned, and to check for any pests, which um, I'm making this video along with another video that I may or may not be posting about spider mites. So I'm also battling spider mites as we speak. But it's getting better since I first started cleaning the leaves because it's been about four days and I haven't seen any spider mites or webs, which is fantastic. It's making me really happy. Um, but we're going to go ahead and just check all the plants that are near my sink because there's a window right here. And I try to put some of my humidity loving plants right here for like when I do the dishes, the steam rises up when I use hot water. So it helps with humidity. So let's go on in and see what plants need loving. So I am going to share with you guys a very magic tool. This is a moisture meter. You can get these on Amazon, Lowe's, Home Depot, probably Walmart, Meijer, probably anywhere that sells planty stuff. Um, this really helps for you to not underwater or overwater. And you can also use the finger method where you stick your finger in the soil about an inch or two down, like to your, um, this knuckle right here. And if the soil is really dry and doesn't stick to your finger, that means that you can go ahead and give it a good watering. I personally don't really like that method because you can't tell if the water is all the way at the bottom. So this is what helps you um, so you'll definitely be seeing me use this. This also helps, this is also like a pH meter and a light meter, which I don't really use that. I just use it for the moisture meter. So I'm going to go ahead and check first my red Maranta. Um, let's go ahead and see. Um, if you guys can see, the meter's at four, so I'm going to go ahead and let this one be for a few more days. This one does like to have its soil pretty moist. Um, I do need to water this one more often than not because it is in a terracotta pot, and terracotta pots soak up a lot of the moisture. And this one is honestly, I've moved this one around a few times because one, I found spider mites on it like a month ago and I chopped off the leaf that I saw spider mites on it and I sprayed it down and I quarantined it over here and it has been putting out new leaves left and right. Like This one's about to pop, this one, um, this little guy right here. So that's what, three leaves right now? And it was flowering, but the flower didn't last long. But yeah, it looks like three new leaves are gonna come out and if you don't like crispy leaves, I wouldn't recommend getting this plant because they, they're just bound to get crispy edging. It's just part of this plant cycle. So I'll go ahead and put this guy right back up there. Um, I am propagating some string of hearts. I just chopped this one up a few days ago. I don't have any more glass fixtures to make it look cute. So I think I'm actually going to go to the thrift store today or this weekend to buy some more glass fixtures to propagate in because the water bottle isn't cutting it. It's not very cute, but it's more of a last minute thing that I really needed to do. Um, and then I also have more string of hearts propagating in this pineapple shot glass. And if you don't know me, I do like pineapples. I also have a pineapple tattoo that's my propagating string of hearts. Um, they don't need filled up because I just started this propagation a few days ago. So it's gonna take a few weeks for them to start growing roots. Here is a um, variegated Peperomia obtusifolia. I've had this one in this shot glass for 
honestly about two months now i just haven't found the time to really pot it up and i kind of forget about it because it's hidden on the shelf over here which i can show you guys so this is one shelf two shelf and then some plants down there Anyway, this is the variegated peperomia obtusifolia. This whole plant died, but I was able to save at least one and look at those roots. I should really pot it up, but I'm actually going to a plant swap here in the next few days, so I think I might bring this one. Yeah, look at that variegation. It's really pretty. And this guy right here is, oops. This guy right here is called a zebra plant. That's, oh, it's Opalandra squarosia. I got this from Young's. I've had to chop off a few dead leaves, but this guy is honestly thriving. It does let you know when it needs watered. Um, the leaves are, they're almost like photonias in a way. They really droop. They droop like every few days. If you don't stay on top of watering, they droop and they'll let you know. But let's go ahead and check. I don't think I want to water it just because, yeah, the meter is at like four and a half and it's not drooping. So I'm not going to water this one today. Um, this one is my uh, African Violet. All the blooms died, so it doesn't have any blooms. These typically have really pretty blooms right in the middle. You can find these almost anywhere also. Um, let's see if this one needs watered. It's out of three, so I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry out also. These plants, I don't know why, but these plants just weren't thirsty today. I'll water plants if they get down to like two or one. Because obviously you don't want to overwater your plants. That's a big no-no. Um, here is a different way that I am propagating some string of hearts. I'm not using the water method. This is a soil method. Um, I think you like, they're called like the butterfly cuttings. And you just place them on top of the soil and then I just missed it like every other day, which I'm gonna go ahead and miss them. Obviously they need more water than normal because they're trying to grow roots. So there's that. Here is my new baby, my whale fin. I will include the unboxing video down below. I'm not going to water this one because I've only had it for like five days. I gave it like a good drink when I potted it up, so I'm not gonna water that one today. And I'll go ahead and show you guys some of my rooted cuttings. This is my Philodendron Podatum. I will also include the unboxing for this one down below. This one was just a cutting when I got it and I only had, I believe three leaves when I got it. I think I only had these bigger three leaves when I got it and it, they did not have all these roots. It has really good root ball going on. Um, these two are new and it's popping out a new leaf as we speak. I'm sure this one will probably pop later today. Um, this one was also battling spider mites and I wasn't going to throw this one away because this one's one of my favorite plants. So I've been spraying it down in the sink and I've been using um, some neem oil that's what it's called some neem oil on it every day and i haven't seen any since so we're doing good there but back to my monstera siltipacana this is just a cutting it doesn't have any roots yet i've only had it in this cup for a few days um, so i'll let that be and i will show you guys like my very first plant that i got like a year ago from Ikea, this is just a bamboo stick. I'm surprised that it's still alive. I just have it in this cup with some rocks at the bottom. And yeah, it's been, 
been doing pretty good, I'd say. I do see a spider web on it though, so I'm about to spray this down. No spider mites today, uh-uh. Some plants that I typically bottom water that need water today, I am going to do that. And I will show you guys that when the time comes. But since I'm kind of moving away from the sink, I'm gonna go ahead and get my watering can ready. I just have this little watering can. I need a bigger one because I have to make multiple trip with, trips with this. Um, I got this one at Ikea a few years back. I'm also going to fertilize. I'm not gonna fertilize for too much longer because it is going into the fall season and typically plants don't grow in the fall. Some do, but um, this is the fertilizer that I use. It is the Organic Pro. I think it's helped a lot during the summer with growth. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and just pour just a little bit in. I would say not even, probably half a teaspoon, not even that. I just kind of eyeball it because, I don't know. I just do, I don't feel like measuring it. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and use distilled water because I don't think my plants like tap water. Well, some don't mind it, but like my peace lily and my calatheas, they don't like the tap water. So I'm going to go ahead and just fill this up all the way and kind of stir in the fertilizer. So let's go ahead and move into the other room. Okay, so now we are at my fireplace mantle. I don't have a lot of plants on here. I only have this syngonium and then a pothos over there that's not doing too hot. Um, I don't have a lot of plants here yet. One, because I don't think this really receives a lot of light, really. Um, I have my back door here and then I have a window there. But, but yeah, let's go ahead and see if this baby needs watered. This guy was much fuller when I first got it, but I think it had a pest. And so I trimmed it up. I trimmed it down a lot. And I've trimmed down, I've actually taken some propagations from it. So since this guy has struggled with pests in the past, that's what I'm doing now. I'm just checking for pests. There's a lot of dead leaves, so I think I want to get my scissors and cut off the dead leaves. But there's some also new leaves that are nice and shiny, so that's a good sign. Okay, so this is also in a terracotta pot, so it needs watered more often than not. Okay, so this guy is at one, and I'm actually going to check a few spaces because some spaces might be drier than others. Let's go ahead and trim off some of these dead leaves and give it a good drink. All right, I have my handy dandy cinder, cinders, what? Scissors, and you wanna make sure that you clean your scissors before you touch your plant with them because you don't wanna cause any infections or bacteria or whatever. But let's just trim all these bad boys up. That way it makes the plant happier. And obviously some plants are going to die. It's just part of the cycle. The older leaves are going to die off, but if, as long as it's putting out new leaves, then that should be a-okay. What? You're just outside. I'm not leaving you out again. Give me a few minutes. Okay, I think I got most. You could probably cut this one off. Oops. No. Oh my God, my legs are so sore. I started back up at the gym and a few days ago is our leg day and I can definitely feel it now. But these are just all the dead leaves that I cut off. 
Now, time to water it. Yeah, it was really thirsty because it soaked up that water right away. So you wanna let that soak in just for a little bit. You don't wanna to get too carried away. I know I do that sometimes. But you just wanna make sure that you get all around the plant. All right, that should be good. Let her back up. Okay, here is a pothos. This was also one of my very first plants and it's really droopy for some reason. It just started looking like this. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm gonna look for pests. This plant is super yellow and mushy. So I'm gonna see. Yeah dry as a bone so it's not getting over watered so it's definitely under watered I would say when plants are droopy like this that means that they're either really thirsty or you're over watering it so I'm gonna give this guy a really good drink there we go We are moving on to the next room. This is probably one of my favorite areas right here. Um, I have some hanging plants right here, my monstera, and then some plants down here. So I'll go ahead and start down here. And you know what, that's what I forgot. I need to clean off these leaves on this ZZ plant. So I'm going to go grab a wet washcloth and I'll be right back. Grabbed a couple just in case. So, Here is this beautiful ZZ plant that has grown so much for me since I first got it at the beginning of summer. So I don't know if you can really tell the difference right now, but this is the leaf that I just washed off and this is a dusty leaf. So yeah, it's really disgusting. And you guys know I have three cats and a dog. So you're probably gonna see like little hairs on my plants not a spider web I promise you it's just animal hair and it's so hard to not let your ZZ plant get this dusty because they literally require zero care just give them like medium to low light and don't really ever water these plants because you can see their thick stalks that's where they store all of their water so honestly if you're new to plants, I highly recommend getting a ZZ plant. They will not disappoint you. Okay, and I'm just going to cut off a few of the older dead leaves. And I'm also going to water this plant because I haven't watered it for about a month and a half now. So we're just going to go ahead and give it just a little drink. It doesn't need much. And here is my variegated peperomia. She is not doing too hot. There's a bunch of droopy leaves, dead leaves that I'm gonna pick off. I don't know what is with like these types of peperomias, but I have such a hard time keeping them alive. So if you guys have any care tips for me for these types of peperomias, please let me know down in the comments. I'm just gonna trim off all the dead looking leaves. Here is one of my Sansevierias. Um, I think that, I don't know, let me see. 
These are also another plant that you can neglect for weeks on end. The soil is like all hard though, so I might, what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of poking holes in it to loosen up the soil. But yeah, this one's also dry as a bone. Which I might as well give it a little drink while I'm here because I haven't watered it for about a month now. So here is my um, silver satin argirius, I think it is. which I'll go ahead and just give this one just a little drink. Okay. It has a couple dead leaves on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn those off. This one is super yellow, so I don't know why. Look how, there's just one yellow leaf like this, like it's all yellow. So if you know what these mean, let me know. I'm assuming that it's just one bad leaf and it's just, it's time to go. But this guy is so long, it trails all along my wall. So I'll probably do a propagation video on this guy. That might be my next video, honestly. I'll give you guys a close up of what this guy looks like. Look at all this new growth right here. That is so pretty. And it trails. I really don't know what this guy is doing. It's super long. I don't want it touching the ground because then my pets will get it. But here's my Monstera Deliciosa. I got this one from Lowe's. No, Home Depot. This is its newest leaf. The sky dries out really fast. I know I just watered it a few days ago, but I'm gonna go ahead and check again. Yep, it, no, it does not need watered. Like see, the top portion feels really dry, but see, this is how you avoid root rot is you make sure that you use this moisture meter because if I would have watered this guy again, who knows what would have happened. But I'm gonna go ahead and trim off this dead leaf. It was like that before I even bought the plant. There we go. And then I have two philodendron cordatums. This one is newer. What? I just watered this one not too long ago. Okay, so I brought over my other philodendron cordatum. This one's a lot smaller and it's super dry. It needs more water ASAP. Um, there's some brown crisping leaves, some curling of the leaves, which is also a sign of thirst and the soil is bone dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this one and trim off these dead leaves. Okay, so now we are here at the Lemon Lime Philodendron, and this is also in a terracotta pot, so it dries out quicker than normal. It's added to, so I'm gonna go ahead and water it. This will be the first time I've watered this since I've gotten this. Um, I like to get my plants adjusted to their new home before I water them and try to stress them out even more. So I would say now's a good time to go ahead and water it. Okay, 
so now that we are at my other shelf, um, this is where most of my Hoyas are and some of the Calatheas, which I moved a lot of plants away from this area because I found a lot of spider mites. Um, but let's go ahead and water some of these bad boys. This is my Hoya Curtisii. And as you can see, um, some of the leaves, the back of the leaves are pretty wrinkled, like this one right here. And that means that that's a good indicator that this plant is really thirsty and the leaves are falling. So I'm gonna go ahead and water this bad boy. And typically I bottom water a lot of these plants, but I just forgot that I have a doctor's appointment in the next hour. So I gotta make this pretty quick. But I'll go ahead and briefly explain what bottom watering is, and it's really beneficial. I highly recommend it typically because one, it can avoid fungus gnats. Um, two, it can avoid root rot. And three, it's just overall preferred from the plants. Um, so you just would get a saucer or something like this, and you would fill it up with water and place the planter, make sure that it has drainage holes or otherwise it's not going to soak up the water. So you go ahead and just place it in there like so and you let it hang out in there, I would say like 20 to 30 minutes until it's not soaking up any more water because the plant's only going to soak up what it needs. So that's one way it really helps with not overwatering the plant. But today I don't have time to do that but I'm just going to water this plant while it's in here to avoid any drippage onto the floor. And here's my Pelionia poultra, I think it's called. I did have this on a um, board growing upwards. I did a repotting video with that plant, but it just wasn't too happy. It was in a pot that was way too big and one of the other plants was dying, so I just repotted it in this tiny little terracotta, and hopefully it just grows downward, but so far, it's not doing too hot. It is just a, I'm just gonna bring a cup of water over here, but this right here is just a little baby humidifier. It's technically an essential oils humidifier, but I don't put any essential oils in here, obviously. I got it off Amazon for like 10 bucks when I first started getting into plants because I didn't think I'd need a huge humidifier, but now I do and I have a bigger humidifier in a different room, but this is just a wee little one and I'll be right back with a cup of water. I will also show you guys my Cebu Blue cuttings. They have lots of roots, which I put these guys in soil a few weeks ago and they were not happy at all. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. So if you guys wanna let me know how you pot up your rooted Cebu Blues, Cebu, Cebu Blues, go ahead and leave a comment down below. Um, let's see here. Here is my rattlesnake calathea, which calathea is humidity loving plants and they're li they like their soil to be moist, um, which this, this guy is still pretty wet, so I'm not going to water it. Um, here is a, uh, Maranta, or otherwise known as, as like the rabbit track plant. It's really pretty. Um, yeah, this guy could use a watering right now. So I'll go ahead and water this guy just a little bit. And down here, hopefully my Thing cooperate. There we go. Here's some of my Hoyas. Um, I just watered these guys not too long ago. Here's my Deschidia, which I don't know what variety of Deschidia this is. So if you guys know and want to leave me a comment, please do because 
I got this from the honey plant and she was unsure which one it was, which is totally okay with me, but it's still pretty moist. It's somewhat like a Hoya, so you want them to dry out in between waterings. And I have down here, I don't know if you guys can, okay, here we go. I have three philodendrons, a philodendron Macaulay's, a philodendron Moonlight, and a philodendron Prince of Orange, which for some reason, I really don't know what's wrong with them. Um, but they were, they had like bacteria infection and I went ahead and cut off all the not so good leaves. But look at this guy. This has been trying to unfurl for like a month now. I want to see if these need watered. They're pretty good still from when I, because these guys were suffering from well, they weren't suffering from spider mites, but their leaves weren't looking too good. So I gave them a good bath. So they're still pretty moist. Okay, here we are at my other plant shelf. A lot of these plants look really thirsty and I'm seeing more spider webs on this thing. Are you kidding me? Yeah, there's a lot of gnats. So I am going to tend to this one later. Um, here is a really sad looking Colea Peperomioides, which I'm gonna go ahead and shut this that way there isn't that glare. There we go. Um, Colea Peperomioides. It's not doing too hot. It's really droopy, so I'm assuming that it just needs a drink. Here is my little baby Monstera Deliciosa. It has been growing so much since I first got it. Um, I have it like on these chopsticks to help support it because these guys like to lean everywhere. But their leaves are kind of curling, so I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a drink. And I have these mosquito bits in here on top of the soil and sand to help with fungus gnats because I was struggling a lot with fungus gnats with this plant. But since I've put that in there, it's been doing a little bit better. Um, here is my string of hearts, which I am actually going to let this one go a little bit longer without water. Here, you can't really see, but this is my Black Pagoda lipstick plant, which it's still pretty heavy, so it doesn't need any water right now. Um, down here are my succulents. Um, I don't think I want to water these guys either because I just watered them about a week ago, and you obviously don't want to over water succulents. Here is a single hindu rope which i don't think is doing too hot it's really wrinkly so i'm gonna go ahead and give it some water all right now we're in one of my spare bedrooms and i haven't opened the window for this room yet so i'm gonna go ahead and open this window i'm going to turn on the grow lights but i have my humidifier right here I need to fill it up daily, unfortunately. I just haven't gotten around to buying one of those nice, fancy, huge humidifiers. I just don't find the need for it right now. And I just, I don't mind filling this up daily because it's just part of my routine, you know? So I will be right back. I just turn it on full blast and then it'll go all day. And I let it run it through the night until it just runs out. Um, but if you guys don't already know, which I don't know if I'm gonna even post this video, if I do, it might be before or after I post this one. But basically all of these plants are in quarantine right now. I found some mealybugs and spider mites on these. So they're basically in timeout right now. So I really don't need to do much with these right now except just fill up their humidifier and just kind of check around for more pests. 
We are now in my bedroom and I'm first going to tend to this burgundy rubber tree. Their leaves get really dusty, so I'm just going to spend some time wiping them off. And how I know for sure that this plant needs watered is because the leaves curl up. Like, look how curled up that is. She is begging for water right now, so I'm going to give her what she's asking for. Okay, I am back. I had to change and go to my doctor's appointment because I didn't realize what time it was. And I had to rush out of there. Um, I went to Home Depot in Auburn. And they didn't have anything good so that was kind of a disappointment but that's okay because I didn't have to buy anything now let's get back into watering these plants that are in my bedroom um, I know I started watering this one but it didn't get enough water my philodendron Florida beauty is still pretty moist so I'm not going to water it but do you see this new leaf getting ready to unfurl. Are you kidding me? I cannot wait to see this fresh leaf. This leaf is not looking too high. It has some brown edging, but it looked like that before I bought it. So it's not my fault. Um, this fern has been growing nonstop since I've got it, but it does not need water today. Um, this goldfish plant should be okay. I don't know if you guys can see, probably not. My goldfish plant doesn't need watered. Probably need to propagate this one too. It's getting too out of hand. Um, my Hoya Compacta Hindu rope. I actually need to repot this thing. But I can't tell. I'm using the stupid finger method. I need to go grab my moisture meter. Later. Well, on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end that video there for today. I have a huge mess to clean up and I need to go buy a stronger hook to hang up on my ceiling because that has happened twice so far. And I'm not the most gentle person because when I was using that moisture meter, I was definitely jabbing it in there using hard pressure. So obviously that's on me. That's my fault. So that sucks. And this pot even broke, but that's okay because this was like a $2 pot. I guess that's how my day is going. I'm just, oh, I have to vacuum up a bunch of soil. Go ahead and leave a comment down below on how you tend to your plants daily. And maybe we could share some tips together because, you know, I'm all about hearing other people's tips and stories on their plants. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.